So, in fact, here another way of understanding this is through the notion of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. You see, what are we saying in effect? We are saying here that when you put the sequence into the system, what comes out is the same sequence multiplied by a constant. Now, this is not going to happen for all kinds of sequences. If you had, you know, a sequence which is square like in nature, square wave like in nature, it is not going to happen for an SI system in general. But for a complex exponential, this happens. When you put in a rotating phasor into the LSI system with impulse response HN, out comes the same rotating phasor, but multiplied by a constant. Now, such a sequence which goes into a system and emerges as the same sequence, but multiplied by a constant is called an Eigen sequence of the system. sequence that goes in that is unchanged in form as it emerges. that the action of the LSI system is decoupled for each of these sequences. We will understand this better if we can do one more thing. Suppose by whatever means now, you could express any sequence. You see, remember you did this earlier. You expressed any sequence x n in terms of these impulse sequences delta n minus k. So, you wrote any sequence x n as summation k x k delta n minus k. So, you were able to express any sequence in terms of the unit impulses. Now, suppose by whatever mechanism you are able to express any sequence as a linear combination of such rotating phases, rotating with different angular velocities. Then what we are saying here is if I take any one of those phases that comprise the input, the response of the system to that component of the input is only the same phase multiplied by constant. So, if I decompose, see if I decompose the input along each of these phases, so to speak, for different omegas, then what I am saying is the response to the phase at a particular angular frequency omega has nothing to do with the angular free at the phasor at some other omega. They are all decoupled, they can be treated separately. Slightly deeper issue, but we will understand this better as we go along. So, in other words, what we are saying is, I mean, let me let me try and let me try and bring this a little more, you know, it takes a little time to absorb this. What we are saying is take the same system S <coughs> LSI HM. Suppose instead of giving e raise the power j omega n, you give a 1 e raise the power j omega 1 n plus a 2 e raise the power j omega 2 n plus a 3 e raise the power j omega 3 n. Out would come a 1 h omega 1 e raise the power j omega 1 n plus a 2 h omega 2 e raise the power j omega 2 n plus a 3 h omega 3 e raise the power j omega 3 n. This is not at all difficult to show from the property of linearity or additivity and the property that when you put in e raise the power j omega n out comes e raise the power j omega n multiplied by h omega. So, what we are saying is the action of the LSI system on each of these components is decoupled. I do not have to worry about what A 2 and A 3 are when I am calculating the output to A 1 e raise the power j omega 1 n. 
when I am calculating the output to A2 erase the part j omega 2, and I do not need to worry what A1 and A3 are. There is a decoupling. Now, carry this argument to its limit. So, if you could, here I am taking a very specific input which had only 3 such e raise the power j omegas, only 3 such frequencies. Suppose I use a continuum, I use all the frequencies omega from 0 to 2 pi or all the frequencies from minus pi to pi. Incidentally, now we make a remark about what range of values omega can reasonably take. Omega is the normalized angular frequency. Now, on the frequency axis, there is aliasing or there is repetition. beyond omega between minus pi and plus pi. You see, the reasoning for that is very simple. What does omega equal to 2 pi correspond to? Omega equal to 2 pi corresponds to the sampling frequency. And we have agreed that every sine wave is comprised of two oppositely rotating phases. One rotate, if, if a sine wave has frequency omega, it comprises of two phases, one rotating clockwise with frequency omega and one rotating anticlockwise with frequency omega. In other words, if you take both to be in the clockwise or anticlockwise direction, one with frequency omega and one with frequency minus omega. Two phases come together to form a sine wave. So, on the phase of angular frequency axis, each pair of frequencies omega and minus omega come together to form a sine wave. And obviously, their magnitudes, the, the two phases have to have the same magnitude and opposite starting angle or opposite phase. Now, we have seen that when you sample, you take the original set of frequencies or original frequency axis whatever it is, shifted by every multiple of the sampling frequency and these shifts are added. On this normalized scale, the sampling frequency is 2 pi. So, you are going to take the original spectrum, shift by every multiple of 2 pi and add up these shifted versions. Let us show that graphically. Whatever there is, you are going to shift this by every multiple of 2 pi and you are going to add them. Now, obviously, if you do not want these shifts to overlap, this must remain between minus pi and pi. And of course, that is also obvious from what we have seen in the sampling theorem. The maximum component that you have in the original signal should not be more than half the sampling frequency. So, that means the so called unique omegas that we can deal with are only between minus pi and pi. So, when we take any input x n and ask whether it can be expressed as a linear combination of e raise to the power j omega n, we need only to worry about the omegas going from minus pi to pi. Of course, the frequency axis is continuous. So, I am not going to be able to use a summation now. I need to integrate the limit of a summation as the variable of summation becomes continuous is an integral. Right? So, what we are saying is, suppose, I mean I am trying to motivate the whole idea. Suppose, I take the same LSI system once again, give to it a combination of x omega e raise to the power j omega m. You know what I mean by x omega? x omega is the component 
of Ixin along e waste the power j omega. So, what I am saying is suppose you are able to decompose just like you decompose the impulse response, suppose you are also able to decompose the input along different g e raised to the power j omega n. And you did this for all the omegas going from minus pi to plus pi. Then it means that you know since minus pi to plus pi is exhaustive, putting those components back should give you back except. You know, so what we are saying is, you see, what we are trying to ask is what comes out here, is not it? And we are saying, in particular, here when you take x omega e raised to the power j omega m, what will come out? So, x omega e raised to the power j omega m is going to give us x omega h omega e raised to the power j omega. Is that right? And therefore, if you integrate this, if you integrate over omega here, you can also integrate over omega here. And how can we say that? That is because of the property of linearity. If for each omega I can do this, I can do it for the combination of the omegas. Now, this will lead us to a very interesting property of this inner product. This inner product of a sequence with the rotating phasor gives us a new domain called the discrete time Fourier domain or discrete time Fourier transform domain. We shall see more of this in the lecture to come and build up in greater depth the whole idea of the discrete time Fourier transform in the coming lecture. Thank you. Mm -hmm.